So I just wanted to show you this red fleshed apple seedling. This is about, I don't know how many years old, four or five, I think. And this was actually in a row of seedlings that I cut off and most of them I grafted somewhere else. But this one I just left in the ground because uh, it was so red. You can see how red the leaves are and also look at that bark. There's definitely a reddish cast to that bark. So apparently this red color is always there. It's just not visible when the leaf is green. Now if I contrast this with Bud 9, Bud 9 is a common rootstock. It also has red leaves in the fall. So you can see that Bud 9 has some pinkish purple pigment all the way into the wood, right down into the center there. And this seedling does not. Also look at the bark color. This Bud 9 clearly has a lot more of whatever expression of those red pigment genes. It also has very red fleshed apples. Um, they're like small crab apples. However, among the red fleshed apple seeds that I've planted, um, this one is definitely showing higher than average pigment. So we can go down to the other apple tree row and see what those look like. So if we look through this entire row of red fleshed apple seedlings here, um, at least one parent is red fleshed out of, I think both of these entire rows are all three of them. You can see that there just is not as much pigmentation going on. There's one there that looks fairly pigmented. And that could have to do with just the growing conditions or timing or something like that. Here's another one right here. There's really only a few. There's a pretty red one there. You can see how red the leaves are at the top. But these are definitely the exception. That's kind of what I'm looking for a lot when I cruise these rows, just checking the, the trees out. Looking for red bark and red pigmentation in the fall. I have noticed some trends. It seems like some of the crosses will have more of a tendency towards having red leaves and bark. The Wixen crosses seem to have quite a bit, which is encouraging. The Sweet 16s also have that, so this is a Sweet 16 here. There just seems to be maybe a slight tendency towards more red in the Sweet 16s, and then this year I noticed on the actual Sweet 16 tree that it had a lot of red leaves at this time of year too. It could be possible too that red, red pigment in other parts of the tree, like extremely red skin for instance, such as William's Pride and King David, may actually contribute. It might be just a different expression of the same tendency towards, uh, you know, these red traits. So, of course, where we want it is in the flesh, uh, not so much as the skin or the leaves or the wood. But it may all be kind of the same thing. I'm not really sure, but we'll, hopefully we'll find out. And here again we have some more Wixen leaves looking very red. This is out of the newest batch of seedlings. Very encouraging. I fertilized and watered these trees and made a quick video um, saying that I was trying to push them into one last growth spurt. So that worked on some of them and it didn't on others. This one, here's the mark down here. So that one put on another six or more inches. This has a, a fair amount of red in the, the leaves too. So here's the other one that I marked with a stick and a mark and you can see a little black mark on the stick right at the top of that seedling and it didn't really grow at all. So it was a little late to really try pushing those. And some grew, some didn't, but I have no doubt that the ones that grew did so because of that last little push I gave them with uh, some extra food and water.